So, welcome to an Eternium video for the new release uh, 1.5.32, which has come out today. Um, so, this video I'm going to talk about it purely from a mage perspective. So, if you um, there'll be a lot of stuff in here that's relevant to everyone, but um, some of the things that I've seen may well only be relevant to mages. I'm not sure yet, so I haven't fully thought ahead on how much of this I'm going to talk about. Um, but 1.5.32 is a very big change, it introduces a whole new play mode. Um, there's changes to the UI, how some of the things in game work and operate, and there's a really old PC bug that's fixed as well, although uh, that seems to have introduced a new problem, but I think that is going to just be a uh, learning process to learn to play slightly differently. Um, and we also have, as we can see here, two new events. Uh, first up, we have uh, a new beginning, Gold League, which is going to be running for the next 12 days. Um, I am not sure yet whether I'm going to take part in this. I wasn't planning to, but uh, it's the sort of thing where you can earn glory um, and for the season, I would like to grab a few Celestial Transforms, which uh, can be earned in these events. Um, but in Gold League, for a new beginning, you will basically start with a brand new character. And the aim is to progress as far as possible in just six hours of gameplay, which you can spread out how you like over those 12 days. That, that clock will only be counting down if you're playing in a story map or in a trial or if you have jumped into somewhere like the training grounds you're going to be running the clock down. Um, the only things that carry over from your main account you'll get a separate um, character to play that, a separate event character slot. Um, the only things that carry over from your main account for that will be any crafting recipes that you've unlocked, any crafting perks that you've achieved, uh, the gem balance on your account and any bonuses earned from medals that you may have. We also have, starting today, this runs for a long time, uh, Season 5. This is basically played on your main account and it's a competition to see who can reach or who can clear the highest trial possible and your fastest clear time on that trial is the basis of the leaderboard. So the higher and faster that you are, the better place you'll be. Um, we'll take a look at this in a few minutes. Um, if I close this down, so we've got a new screen when we come in, we can see it's only 1.5.32. I quite like the change that they've made here. This used to have your full email address down here. Um, so someone that puts out Eternium videos, being able to come in and switch characters nice and easily without revealing things like that means I don't have to stop recording and restart recording. I've um, got a few buttons here, so our heroes at the top, this will show you which characters you've got, which ones you want to play, and I have a lot of ELR mages. Uh, Wispy here is my main push mage. Jemima is an old style ELR experience farmer. She's a crit build EXP farmer um, that still uses things like Blizzard, Nova and Immolate rather than Frostbeam. Uh, I don't like Frostbeam when it comes to experience farming. I think it's too overpowered. Um, and I like to play 
in the old style from time to time so she hangs around Jemmy is my gold farmer so she's decked out completely in gold farming gear Lily Wisp is the one that I play the most at the moment uh, she's a fire lily exp farmer using death from above um, and I want to try and build her a push set as well using fire lily so she's going to be fire lily all the way and finally wispy farm is completely expendable uh, it does five star story mode does some crafting from time to time once five star story mode is done and uh, 77 has been crafted uh, that character is up for deletion so if I do take part in a new beginning gold then wispy farm will be deleted prior to the end of that to enable the event character to be pulled into this main account so that they can then start five, five star running as well um, we'll go back to wispy for now in options under our settings there's a new setting in here down near the bottom display item level on um, this shows whether the level for items in your inventory is shown or not so you have a choice do you want to have a really horrible time and have to select every item in the inventory separately to see what level it is or do you want the level displayed as it always has done previously it's quite nice that this is defaulted as on so um, you won't have to come in and set this yourself it should already be on you can go and switch it off if you don't care about any single drop that you get you're going to salvage them all or if you like clicking through everything individually um, so that's the only change I think at the moment in the settings so we shall jump in and have a look at some of the UI changes so we have some large gold icons now on the left hand side of the screen these have changed from plain white Quite seem to quite regularly update these when they're making changes to the game and um, at the top as always is the reward calendar uh, so that hasn't changed underneath that is the achievements panel uh, for any achievements that you've done in the game so those are all there our in-game mail is exactly where it is uh, the next icon down is for uh, a new beginning AMB gold we click on that we'll see um, from here we can create a hero to take part in that event uh, you can also from any character monitor the progress um, it's a good event in that uh, reaching level 70 you'll get five glory clearing troll 30s another five glory troll 50s another 10 glory trial 80s 10 glory 100 is 15 another 15 at 120 and 20 glory if you can get up to 130 um, and the other really nice thing with the uh, gold new beginning event this is the same for any new beginning event at trial 90 we can earn a celestial transform and another at trial 110 if you apply a celestial transform to any of your gear uh, it will turn it as you can see I've already applied to all the items that can be transformed in my gear and um, what it does is it pushes your stats to near maximum and it adds a vitality stat as well um, when I say near maximum this each stat will be if it's not already at maximum from when you crafted it or got it as a really lucky drop um, it will be two celestial orbs away from maximum so if you really wanted to as I've done with critical damage on all my pieces um, 
or with frost damage on trinkets if you really want to push those to the maximum two celestial orbs per stat so four celestial orbs have gone into this to take those up to the absolute maximums on them um, underneath going back to the main ui here underneath that we have our gold league there's quite a lot going on in this one uh, not gold league season um, at the top we have our season rewards uh, there's two rows here um, you'll basically be collecting these bottom row rewards as you go along just standard gameplay fills this up quite quickly uh, you can see I've reached season level 13 of 20 already I haven't really been doing anything apart from checking out what's changed in the game and running a few trolls experience farming and uh, a couple of higher trolls and one at 130 just to see how the game's behaving um, and that has already got me up to season level 13 as you sort of complete these tiers you just come along and you'll tap or click to collect the item those have now vanished off to the in-game mail uh, and then it's just a case of collecting those from there and they drop into your inventory um, additionally we have a seasonal bank so whenever you earn gold or gems they deposit an amount into your bank and you collect that at the end of the season so that's a matching if I ran a story level and got one gem I would get that one gem instantly and my bank would also get one gem at the end of the season these gems and this gold or however much I've collected at the moment a limit of 1000 or 1 million gold that would be transferred to me the season pass increases that limit to 10,000 gems and 10 million gold and the season pass also unlocks this top line of the season rewards um, personally I think season pass is worth getting particularly for the gems it's really good value for those um, and it unlocks a few things that's I thought there was some yeah there's some jewelry chest on the top line that you can collect so those are quite nice to have as well so me personally I will be getting the season pass just not yet but uh, it should be quite easy to get 10,000 gems through gameplay by doing month uh, dailies every day that will be 3,000 gems per month that gets us to 6,000 already um, 10 million gold is very easy to collect as well um, further down there are various rewards that can be collected for completing achievements as you go through the season um, I thought it was a bit of a long-standing bug that when I logged in these first four were instantly awarded to me um, I realized because I've cleared troll 100 and the devs haven't reset the highest troll previously cleared on any account it, the game thinks well I've already cleared troll 100 so when I logged in I had these four rewards just sitting there waiting um, and just as uh, I showed you with these up here these drop into your mail and just collect them from there and in, into your inventory um, we have additional ways of earning season experience personally I wouldn't bother with focusing on any of these um, you'll complete most of them just through gameplay um, and unless you really want to be crafting anything I wouldn't wouldn't bother trying to to use those as a way of increasing your season level you'll get that just through killing mobs through your normal gameplay um, at the bottom of the list of rewards uh, we see we've got a lot of medals on offer for those finishing in the top 500 
Uh, mages will only compete against mages. So it's a top 500 mages. There'll be a top 500 for warriors and a top 500 for bounty hunters. You only ever compete against your same, the, the same class. Um, and also rewards, uh, titles are rewarded as well based on your finishing position if you're in the top 500 or above. Um, if you wanted to, if you have got a title and you're not sure how to assign it, if you click on your name you'll see all the titles that you've uh, unlocked. So if I click on Warlord I become Warlord Wispy, but uh, I'll take that off, we're not too bothered about that right now. Um, the other changes that I want to show you, I mean, we've got a nice looking changes to the colours here. Um, pre prior to this, the greens, blues and greys were quite awkward for me to look at and, and see what was going on. Um, I'm just going to open this chest. It's all trash. So we have a change to the UI when we salvage, and I've got a, a full list. So now see at the bottom, it seems to be everything that you can get from salvaging, although I'm not sure why the spirits are in there, because I've never seen a spirit come from salvaging. Um, so previously when we salvaged everything, you'd then have a, a list, like a, a black box at the side and it'd say oh you got 100 lesser water oh you got a million lesser water because we only ever give you water um, now if I salvage everything I'm just going to take a few seconds because it's legendaries uh, it now gives us a graphical representation rather than a, a list and words so that's quite a nice change that looks quite good it just takes a while for these to finish totting up and nearly a thousand water <laughs> um, and that also is a change up here we used to have a little chest where you would click to see your salvage material it's sort of a, an anvil now uh, they've increased for some reason the capacity of this box don't ask me why um, I quite like it in that I've been able to spread some things out a bit so it's less cluttered but unless there's more salvage or more crafting materials coming I don't know there seems to be no reason at the moment for that being increased the sort of main pinch point for most people is regular uh, stash which is still limited here <laughs> so they may someday increase that. It's not their priority at the moment in coding being such a small studio. Uh, next thing, we have an arena that has popped up. This is the new game mode. It's a sort of PvP, player versus player zone. Um, at the moment, I've not registered, I'm not going to for a while. Mostly because I'm not too interested in this version of player versus player. Um, what you will fight is an AI controlled version of a other real person's character. So whatever they last used on their character when they were playing in PvP fighting an AI will be the version of them that you fight. So you're not fighting another player in real time, you're fighting a, an AI version of that player. Um, and from the videos when people were testing this, uh, while the AI is pretty good, it's also pretty dumb from my perspective um, in so far as I think if you were to move out of range of the other player and drop something like Blizzard between you and the other player and then move even further away a human character would move around the Blizzard to try and close you down and the AI will walk right into the middle of the Blizzard and take all the damage and it's just a case then 
of drop an AOE and move back, drop AOE, move back, and just watch the AI be stupid and walk into everything and die. So um, that doesn't look too entertaining from my perspective. I haven't tried it. I'll, I will give it a go and see if that's exactly how it plays out. I hope it doesn't, but it, it seems to be the way that, that that's going at the moment. So there will be a separate video on PvP when we come to try that. Um, Another change, this is a really long-standing bug for PC players. Um, there was a bug if you had your right mouse button and left mouse button clicked at the same time, your character would freeze and do absolutely nothing, and the only way to unlock it would be to right-click again, and then you could start moving. Um, now, if you've got them both clicked, it will run around, you can drag them. What I'm doing here. This does seem to have had a slight knock-on effect when running trials. I don't know if it's. I've certainly not always got, or I certainly don't have the right and left mouse buttons down. Uh, it's very rare for me to hit those. But I'm finding that if I'm running around and I right click, I'm using left mouse to move. Uh, I've got arc lightning on my right click, which I engage uh, enemies with. If I move, and while I'm moving, I then right click. Uh, character, rather than sending arc lightning into the group that I'm aiming at, starts running towards them. Um, I think it's just a case that I need to adapt my playstyle a bit and not right click until the character has stopped moving to the point that I was originally at. Um, so I tend not to click and move, I tend to hold and drag. So it's probably my playstyle that needs to change. It's been annoying and um, I was worried that it was going to make the game unplayable. I've heard talk that allegedly trolls had got harder. I'm not convinced by this. I'm trying to move through the gate here and it's not letting me. Um, did that time. I've run Troll 130 and I was very careful with my movement on that and I've got a 128 clear time with this character. That's exactly what I was getting prior to the changes. So on 1.5.18, which was the previous version of Clade, that's where we were and I don't think it's got any harder. In fact, looking at the leaderboard here, Bo has cleared Troll 151 in 657, which is what I'd expect him to be doing that in. Maybe he's a little bit slower than he, he could be, but that's, uh, yeah, I don't think it's probably got that much harder. Um, my experienced farmer sitting on Troll 100. She's still there. So um, prior to the update, I was averaging 50 seconds per run. I've had a 52 second as my fastest. Again, I've still got to get used to moving this uh, thing where it seems like the, the right click is making me run rather than attack. I don't think they have changed targeting. I think it's more to do with this left click mouse, left click and left button and right button being clicked at the same time. I think the other change that I saw was uh, with our inventory and our stash. When we click on the stash, we no longer see our hero's gear at the bottom here we've only got our inventory we can switch to hero and just see our hero so i assume we can move stuff directly from our hero to stash and vice versa um, but we can't from our stash move stuff from our inventory to our hero where we could have 
previously clicked and dragged down although i think we could probably do that direct from our heroes inventory which we can uh, so we would drag from here to here um, changes here as well we used to have a little plus button down here which would show some additional stats around damage toughness and recovery uh, that's not there anymore and um, what we do have is much more on the details page um, I'm not going to go into these too much just if you click on something it then gives you a description which should be self-explanatory um, this experience gained is not really that accurate so it's not all sources it's, it's most sources you get more experience it's not 100 percent true in what they're saying there um, what that does bring me on to is ability rating i've got 2618 here and it says i have a 39 percent cooldown and that used to be 60 percent um there isn't really a problem the one of the big changes that's come in is to ability rate and alacrity so alacrity is a process where when you're attacking you have a chance to reduce the cooldown on your skills by one second um, that used to have up to a 50 percent chance when your ability rate was at 1500 and i believe that has now increased to 2000 so you're looking at a a minimum ability rate of 2000 to get maximum alacrity um, but the thing that has changed which is something to help uh, those new players and in mid game players that are still leveling up their abilities and don't have a full end game set of gear so all the cooldowns of all all skills have been cut in half um, so not having a really high ability rate shouldn't impact you anymore uh, it should certainly make things like leveling up in a new beginning or amb events uh, more enjoyable it should be more enjoyable for regular players as well as they're not sat there waiting for skills to come off cooldown i think uh, something like blizzard without the ELR gear is something like a 25 second cooldown or something we just saw there it's just under six seconds um, I am going to do some testing I think I can drop my ability rate a bit and push more into uh, power um, I would like to see um, on my skills that I'm using for push Immolate and Frost Nova I'd like every 6 seconds and I would like Frost Beam every 12 seconds if I can drop my ability rate a bit and still achieve that then that's brilliant I can move some stats up into power and be a bit stronger um, I think that is everything that I was planning in talking about some of it scripted some of it unscripted you'll probably be able to work out which was which um one final thing this is annoying there is no unread mail it says one here hopefully this message is going to go away but i suspect that there will be bug fixes dropping in over the coming days and weeks and every time they drop a bug fix in this message is going to renew and it's going to say oh you've got an unread mail and i haven't um so overall yeah it's 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 okay it's change it's not the end of the world um i do need to go and practice a bit and change my play style oh there is one thing there's one mob in trials um that seems to be bugged uh, and i can't figure out which one it is i think it's either the fire summoner or one of the other summoner creatures uh mobs out there which for some reason is a one hit instant death so if it hits you 
you're dead and you don't see it coming and you've got no chance to react um, and figuring out which one it is when there's a whole load of mobs on screen is a bit tricky um, but if I do find out which one it is I'll send in a bug report to uh, the devs and hopefully they can get around to looking into that and fixing it because shouldn't be able to tank every mob on screen and suddenly just one of them all on its own kills you so something's wrong there um but yeah i've not experienced any crashes i know they've been working hard on that prior to release so hopefully um there will be a, a future video on pvp just when i can get around to going in there and having a look at what it's all about it's not a high priority for me i'm not that interested in fighting an ai bot if i was doing pvp i'd be much happier fighting a, another human being and having a proper test of <laughs> of wit and and skills um so that shall be the end of this rather long and rambling video if you made it this far thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions or comments please put them in the comment section down below and i will answer those for you okay so thanks for watching